This does not happen rarely because I don't really like to fly, to tell you the truth. I get anxiety attacks on the, uh, on the plane, but such is the case, you still have to go. Anyways, um, I was on a trip out to the West Coast, uh, more specifically uh, the San Francisco, uh, Santa Cruz area right th down there. And uh, when I was down there, I uh, happened upon, uh, happened to be one project I was working on in two cemeteries. And um, in one cemetery it was uh, the Presidio, which is overlooking uh, San Francisco Bay, a very, very beautiful area, to tell you the truth, very beautiful. And you see one cross after the other, or a marker with the uh, uh, Star David on it. And that's what you see for all the rows, et cetera. And so what you see is that this whole, ma that this whole graveyard is filled with Christians and Jews, people who live their relationship with God. I happened to be in another uh, cemetery, and uh, in this cemetery it was kind of an affluent, I think, area. And uh, I was struck, because most, most uh, stones look the same, but there was one that struck me, it really kind of had me go back there. The stone was some type of, I think, marble, and it was kind of a, a maybe a, a blackish tint. It was brilliant, to tell you the truth. It was 12 feet high by 12 feet long. Isn't that something? Oh my gosh, can you imagine how much that cost? Oh, obviously it had to be an affluent area, correct? But that, this person has spent this amount of money on the, on the and there was, some, uh, uh, there, were, there was something on there. Um, and uh, I got to start thinking, if I was gonna have that, okay, what would I have on my gravestone? So I'm going to ask you guys, okay, if you can think, what would you have on your gravestone? Any depictions can you think of? Catherine? A depiction on it? Well, here's a first, folks. I threw my, pro, my pastor associate for a loop. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what he had on his. What he had on his was a... Um, um, was one of those luxury cars, a Bentley. It was a huge depiction of his Bentley. And then in one foot letters was his name underneath it. Now, what do you think I was thinking when I saw that? Do you think I was happy or was I sad? I was sad, I was sad for him. Um, now, I was sad because uh, if that's the chose he sto if that was the, the scene he chose for the stone, you know what does it say about him? It said what it says is that you know the most precious thing to his heart was the Bentley. Shouldn't it be God? I so I thought, well, you know, when I get that twelve foot by twelve foot, what would I want on there? And maybe you got me when I was a younger priest. Do you know what? Probably a picture of me elevating the Eucharist. Okay, when my hair was all dark and I really looked good. I, you know, I, I, maybe, but you know, as time has gone on, I've thought about it. And I thought, well, what would I put on that, on that huge stone? I think maybe I would like to put pictures of um, um, uh, visiting somebody in the hospital, um, working in the food pantry, working on a soup line, helping somebody who's in trouble. I think maybe something would etch out all the corporal works of mercy that I had done. You know, and in the center of it would probably be a picture of Jesus Christ because all those works flow into that, don't they? Our first reading, the first reading today uh, is about wisdom. And we're reminded in these readings that we are part of the church and there's something greater going on inside our lives than just ourselves. It is God that's in our lives. He's the center. Wisdom tells us that we want to be quiet and we want to sit alone and we want to be with the Lord, to let the Lord come into our lives, to fill us with the wellspring of wisdom. You know, because if we have wisdom, then we're going to realize that honestly, a luxury car or taking care of people who are in need. Who's going to remember you for the luxury car? The priest who drives by 
and looks at the folly of the life that could be empty. Now, I apologize, maybe that person lived a perfectly great life and was very, very good to the poor. However, that's not how the stone would have it look, would it? It would have it look like the person was probably more self-centered. And it really gives us a time to look in our lives and see, well, what would be on that stone? Would it be that we're in a right relationship with God? Or would it be that we put God off to the side here? Now, wisdom tells us that if we have God with us, what do we have? We have everything. We have joy. We have knowledge. We are undertaking God's work, not our work. God's work is much more impressive, isn't it? And I'll tell you, help on the poor, that's much greater. Why is Pope, John Paul, John, uh, Pope Francis so well loved? Because he keeps on talking that the gospel is centered on taking care of the poor in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody likes that. Everybody likes the idea. Now getting down there and doing it, on the other hand, is a whole different story. We'd all like Pope Francis to do all that just by himself so we could feel good about ourselves. But Pope Francis didn't do it by himself. Francis did it because Jesus invited him into that through baptism, just like we're invited to do that through our baptism. I wonder if maybe that huge 12 by 12 uh, gravestone can be an image we can keep up here to give us a motivation to ask that question. If we too were given the ability to design our 12 foot by 12 foot gravestone, what images, authentic, real, what's happened, what images can we put on our gravestones of our lives to show that we really had the wisdom that we're talking about today, the wisdom of God to serve Him in all things and especially in joy?